Hi friends, it's Christina with Christina West Art. I'm playing around with a little new Zoom filter, which I really love. <sighs> so um, it's 2022, it's October, and welcome to my weekly vlog. This is going to be something I do weekly for all kinds of topics, ranging from arts and consciousness, inner work, dream work, archetypes, myths, legends, um, the whole gamut. So my background, if you don't know me, is I was raised by parents who studied the Western mystery traditions, and that's the esoteric traditions. This led me to deep dive into what is God? What is the nature of God? Who is God? And being raised by parents who studied the Western mystery traditions, I was also handed all the books, the myths, the legends, Parseval, all of them. So um, I steeped myself in them. Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella, the originals, the original P.L. Travers, the original Mary Poppins. So this ignited within me a great love of what is the hidden mysteries within the human a story. But also as an artist, I was so taken by what I, what I could perceive was sort of hidden behind all these arts, uh, all these paintings, these sculptures, what are these symbols, what do they mean? They can't just be for decoration. And that led me to study with indigenous shamans. I also studied Wicca, I studied ceremonial magic, I studied uh, with a guru, I did the whole thing. I'm a California girl, that's what we do. We, um, we dive deep and as you know, if, you, if you're any kind of artist that has a discipline over you know, 10, 15, 20 years, 30, 40, 50 years, people want to know what you know like in a Facebook bite size, that's not gonna happen in this vlog. This is a life path. This is a quieting, centered, mindfulness practice. So there's uh, many artists teaching many things, but one of the things that I do not see is what's the difference between product-oriented art art that we make just because we love art, um, expressive arts, therapeutic art, and transformative arts. Th these are, this is a whole arc of different kinds of art making. So that's what I thought I'd talk about every week. And every week we'll just have a topic and we'll see where it leads. So this week I thought I'd just introduce what is transformative arts and consciousness. So many emails I receive, um, people don't really know what that is. They think they know what it is, but you know, they don't. So I have, I've got to go back to beginner's mind because I remember when I didn't know what it was. And it does open up when you study with indigenous people because they not only have a completely different worldview, they're standing in um, another reality that's deeper than our own. We, if you just look at the way we receive information now, it's very fast, it's bite-sized. People don't read a very, a very long uh, blog anymore. Facebook's given us these little bite-sized bits. So this is sort of the antithesis of a transformative arts and consciousness practice. So for me, I'll tell you the story of what happened to me. Uh, one night I went to bed, I'm a dreamer, I'm a dream teacher, and I had a big dream. And in the dream, I was given the information that I was not living my correct life path or my correct livelihood. And I'm going to say dream, but there's lots of stages of what that might mean. But I'm going to keep it there as a dream. Most of us understand what that means. And I was shown that I wasn't living my life path that the, the man that I was with that I loved was not who I was supposed to be with. And I needed to move. And I remember 
I, I was very aware, hyper aware, very lucid. And I said, how will I live? Because of course I had to leave my home, which I loved here in Santa Barbara. And on coming into my body, waking up, I heard her answer and her answer was, So I took the summer to think about that and checked out John F. Kennedy University, which is, was given to me in that experience. And it had a transformative arts and consciousness program. JFK, um, the arts and consciousness program um, is no longer the way it used to be. And I was very lucky because I met so many people there that I still love and adore. And it was really good karma. It was good karma. I left everything. I had a full-time practice working with men and women's groups. I had an art class. I had private counseling. You know, I had a big garage. It was all big studio. We did a lot of work there. And I thought I was with my partner. So the question was, would I trust this dream to uh, leave everything? And there, it's a longer story attached to this, but I did, I did go. And with the help of my partner, who really was a blessing because it was a big deal getting me out. So I landed in Berkeley and in about 2000 and I was in the transformative arts and consciousness. There was class one and class two. Uh, these were um, long uh, programs. And that was the first question what is transformative arts? There's a million different answers to that question. And the sound bite that you're longing for is not gonna happen. What you're gonna hear is stories, stories that I was told, stories that I was shown, stories that I created myself and dived into that are now memories of what that means and putting it to the test. Any dream researcher will uh, put their dream material to a test that they develop, you know, over um, over years of working with dreams. And it's the same thing with arts. The arts are so broad. There's so much. And I've worked. I've been a a social artist and a community artist since I was 18. I graduated early. I graduated at 17. Went to a junior college that had fabulous artists from Chenard Art Institute, from the LA Art Center, from the Sh Chicago. I mean, it was just unbelievable. Many of them worked for the studios, Hanna-Barbera and Disney, and it was great training. So I also worked in art galleries. I worked in um, big galleries in New Orleans on the Rue Royale, and I worked in Rodeo Drive of all places. So I have a real grounding in the arts and in the commercial side of the arts as well. And I'll ha I have stories about that that you'll love later, but not today. So I remember how excited I was and how nervous and all these new people in the class. And, you know, uh, the first thing was what is uh, transformative arts and consciousness? And sort of the subtext to that would be how artists can transform their community, um, their life, their community, and how that goes out in the world. And this is, you know, centered in goodness. <laughs> you know, that the artists are good for the world. The artists are good for the community. Artists are good for their family. That artists bring something that's a really special gift. And it's extremely hard to define. But there's all kinds of ways to come into it. You can't turn on a TV. You can't open a book. You can't look at a, a fashion show or go to an art show or see what a sculptor is doing or look at the scientists, what they're discovering. These are, they may be scientific, but many of them who are making discoveries like Einstein had a exceptional capacity to use their imagination as a cognitive tool. And that means 
using your imagination as a cognitive tool that you perceive, you learn to perceive at different levels of consciousness. And this is shamanic training as well. It's also in the mystery wisdom traditions. It's in Wicca, it's in paganism, it's in the Catholic church. This is the background of a human being who wishes to penetrate or pierce the veil of the first level of consciousness that we see in the world. The tabula rasa, you know, the empty slate. And if you choose to go into transformative arts and consciousness, which is an absolutely fabulous topic, or even choose it occasionally for your art piece, you'll find it's, there's a very different entryway and everybody can do it. It's uh, everybody's welcome. And it's not product based. <laughs> and this is the one thing that we have to really uh, sort of struggle with. It's almost like taking an angel down, you know, because we all have this thought form that we're all supposed to be famous. We're all supposed to have 40 million followers on Wada Wada. And that everything you make sells. So that's called product, product art. You're making art for product. And, you know, I've hung out with all the, the, the Buddhists and the monks and the meditators. And what happens when you make a piece of art just for product? Somehow we can't help it. We constrict. I know you know what I'm talking about. Will the customer like it? Will they like this color? Uh, is it too big? Is it too red? But, uh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Blah, 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 blah. So if so, one of the wonderful tools is that you actually create time out from product painting, if that's what you're doing. I'm just going to say painting or drawing or sculpting, and that you do something just for yourself. And you're doing it as a process. You're doing it as a practice. You're doing it as a discipline. You're doing it as an inquiry. And that's actually my favorite word, an inquiry into something you're really interested in researching. Okay. So that's a, that's a good definition for uh, transformative arts. Now the consciousness part is that transformative arts is Transformative arts and consciousness is based on a spiritual practice and whatever the spiritual practice is, is up to you. But that's really the foundation of what this is about. It's about how do we bring our gifts that we've honed into the world? How do we look around at our society? How do we see what's happening in our communities? And how can we help people? Can we help people? How can we help people? So everybody has gifts. Every single one of you has a gift nestled in your heart, in your limbs, in your head that the world needs. So this is what this blog is about. Let's bring your gifts to the world. This isn't about me yakking on about how good I am, right? That's boring, bores me. What this blog is about is giving you information from all sort of walks of life, uh, different perspectives, uh, different cultures, and how they do it. And uh, hopefully over time, I hope you'll tune in every week, you're going to go, oh my God, that could be me. What did she just say? <laughs> you're going to rewind it and go, you know, it's an aha moment. And it might lead you to the next step. So this is what I mean about transformative arts and consciousness, that if you uh, know about psychology and Carl Jung and the active imagination and synchronicities and how the world, the anima mundi, the world soul starts talking to you, that is transformative arts and consciousness. And what that means is we're centered in the art. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Now for me, I love the human being. I am a life drawer and I had an amazing life drawing teacher when I was at junior college. And he was called uh, Mr. Dietz. He was an ex-military man. He had startling blue eyes 
And if he didn't like what, she, what you were doing, he'd come and tear your paper up, you know, the newsprint paper on the big drawing boards and say, no, what would he say? He said, no coat hangers, no coat hanger outlines. You know, this, this push and pull on the line to look at that, 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 what is the arc of that shoulder blade? How does that, that long ligament come down and tie into that elbow? And we had to study bones, we had to study uh, ligaments, we had to draw our skeletons. And he was one of the best teachers I ever had. And I remember one summer, he, summer break, he said, if you're a real artist, I'll get a, I'll get a journal from you, an art journal. In when we start again with your drawings you did over the summer. And I took that as a personal challenge. And I, every day I had a little art table in my bedroom and I'd do a half hour a day. I'd just either copy Michelangelo or the old masters, try to do a Kathy Kolowitz and her charcoal. Oh, you know, they're awful, but that's how you learn. You have years and years and years of horrendous art behind you. Uh, so I love the human being, I love the human figure, but that actually uh, led into also that I actually love human beings. I love to know their stories. So I wanted to know, my question throughout my whole life is what makes art sacred? Now, that is not answered in a, in a couple of sentences. That is a lifetime of inquiry. And it is so deep and rich and wide and broad. So for me, what makes art sacred led to what makes a human being sacred? So this is a much, much bigger story and we'll pick this up as we go along in the vlogs. But I thought you might like to be introduced to transformative arts and consciousness. Uh, one story I could tell you is the first story we were given, in fact, in the first day in class, and it was a big group of people, dark room, huge, you know, art studio rooms in Berkeley with um, huge just glass windows, marvelous, big two-story. And she talked to, she gave us a story of a young man who had just graduated um, with his master's in art. And there was an overpass in Berkeley in the in you know the Oakland Berkeley area that was sort of dark and dingy and foul and there was a lot of drug dealing that happened there and this young man who was a um, spiritual young man he was he had his own spiritual practice whatever that was and he thought how can we change the energy of this gnarly nasty coily energy space where these drug deals go on. Can, can the energy be changed? Do you do a cleanup? Do you just paint the wall? You know, he had to go through a process, process of inner questioning, of inquiry. And what could I do to change it? Could I do anything to change it? So he just gave himself a test. And what he did is he was um, a practitioner following a guru. I don't know which one. And what he did is he got permission from the city because you have to go through all the process and, you know, petitioning the city, going before the council, saying what you'd like to do, getting the permits, you know, getting his, the ladders, the scaffolding, the paints, everything. So he did get all the permissions and he painted a beautiful painting of the guru. So the, um, the overpass arc, you know, was an arc and he painted the guru at the top of the arc, right where all the drug trafficking was happening and the cars going by. And he set up a camera and took pictures of it. So he took pictures of, anonymously of course, of drug dealings happening, drug little happenings, meetings. And then he did a time-lapsed um, photograph over, I think it was two months, and sure enough, that area quit being a drug drop where people met and exchanged money for drugs. Now, that was astounding. 
And that is what's called a, so you're doing a blind test. You're just saying, can I change the energy here? Um, and I don't think he thought it was him because if you're doing a spiritual practice, you know, you're working with, you know, your spiritual teachers, whoever that is for you. It's an open, open question and an open field. And obviously he thought the grace of his guru was also there. So the question is, what happened? What happened to all those, the, the youth, uh, the people, the, the meetings? Did it go somewhere else? Did it just dissolve? But this is a project, a community arts project that he just went on his own and tried it and it happened. Now that's one of bazillion stories of, um, you know, there's people who clean up neighborhoods, who plant gardens, there's bazillion things, but this is what this young man did. I was so impressed because of course, in my background of uh, studying a lot of the traditions, the indigenous and the multicultural and the religious, I had also studied with the guru at one time. So, you know, tick, 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 you go, hmm, that's, that's marvelous. So that is an introduction to what is transformative arts and consciousness, because it's not just what the young man did, right? So he had this idea come to his heart, come to his head, and then his will, he had to take his will and do all these steps to get into the permissions to have that painted. But it also then, it was a, a freedom, an act of freedom, he did it. And then he just watched and he saw that the area cleaned up as they call it. The atmosphere shifted. So was it the painting? Was it the intent behind the painting? Meaning his personal power, something that we're gonna talk a lot about, which has nothing to do with what America thinks about power. His goodness as a gift, a gift of goodness to his community. The, the guru, maybe there was a spiritual power with a prayer that he had with his guru. I don't know the details. What we do know is that area didn't become a drug drop again. So, so I wanna introduce into this idea that some artists want to use their art to transform the world and to transform themselves as they do it. And this is an indigenous way, by the way, this isn't something new. This is ancient. This is picking up the threads that we've actually not just lost, but sort of has been taken from us. And much of that we can hearken back to for women in the witch trials, which people never wanna hear or talk about. But that lasted for so many hundreds of years that women got the message. They quit speaking up. They quit talking about their gifts. Their, uh, women's gifts, the ability to give birth. You know, we had all the midwives the ability of healing hands, women whose hands got really hot and could they could heal people. Uh, herbalists who, you know, saved the world how many times, uh, the warriors coming home with a wound and they packed the comfrey in there and salved. So all of this was taken away, you know, by the big old uh, church. An artist has to enter into this field of the world. We can't hide from the world so tempting but we have to engage with what is happening and we we can choose to engage and really face into the world and that gives us courage and strength um we also choose to uh, adopt um practices like positivity practices equilibrium open-mindedness and you know keep on going so that's what the blog is going to be about. I actually love the human condition of what's cooking in the mind and the body and the will. What's stopping us from going forward? What's blocking us? And 
part of my speciality is when I listen to people that I have, uh, like I can hear what might help them, uh, what might help them. So I've been working with people since the early 90s. I have uh, consulting. If you want to work with me privately, you can um, email me at christinawestart.com. And there's also a how to start a sacred arts practice on christinawestart.com. Now, I just created the page. So you've got to scroll down a bit, but you'll see my free ebook. You just sign up, get, send your email, and you get this beautiful, beautiful book on how to start your own sacred art practice that I created for you so that you can have a toehold in this new world. If this is something that's new to you, or it could be in a doorway that's an open invitation for you. <laughs> Isn't that fabulous? So, I think that's enough for uh, the first vlog on what is transformative arts and consciousness. Please send emails at christinawestart.com, info at christinawestart.com, and I will answer them in the next vlog or we'll bring a theme that's coming. I work with artistically myself. I'm a sculptor, I'm a writer, and a painter, but I love everything. I love working with crayons with wax with mono prints with stone with oil paints with acrylics I love making book arts projects I I'm a doll maker I was a nationally recognized doll maker for many years and got out of that field but I still make dolls and I teach doll making and I also teach how to make medicine dolls which is um, a discipline and a practice that is um, a more advanced. But for now, I'm doing weekly blogs. So welcome to the Transformative Arts and Consciousness blog. I hope it's given you something to think about. And you could think about where in your world could you bring a little goodness, a little light, a little art? How, how could you do that? There are so many ways to do it. One of the easiest ways is to pick somebody every day and send them a shot of love from your heart. That's really helpful. And that'll get you started thinking about how do I send energy? How do I receive energy? We're gonna, there's a long, beautiful road, but this is an indigenous way of knowing and it isn't, it isn't one way of knowing, meaning it's not one path, it's not, Yaki Indians, it's not Navajo, it's, it's cross-cultural, and the, also the Western mystery traditions and religion and psychology. And I think that's what we really need now. We need food for the soul. So if you're not religious, you can come at it from whatever perspective you come from. If you are religious, you can take that piece. If you like psychology, we're going there. If you just want the, the arts, that will be involved as well. So I hope that satisfies something in your heart. And I'm very excited because I've had so many requests from past uh, clients and past students and people that I'm working with now that they want me to come online. And um, that is what's happening. And we're go I'm gonna be opening up a, a membership site soon. So I have a lot of plans in the works. And I think that it's time for us to have a center where there is wisdom from all over the world that comes forth and also how it is funneled through an artistic viewfinder cross-culturally so that we expand our mind, we expand our heart, and we expand the consciousness that we go around with every day, sometimes with blinkers on, you know, that this is this and that is that, and that's what I know, and that's what I'm going to see in this world. So this blog is to shake that up a bit. So thank you very much. My website is christinawestart.com. Now, Christina is spelled K-R-I-S-T-E-N-A, christinawestart.com. And the free ebook is there. 
you have to scroll down the page a little bit and you just put your email in and right away a download that link will come up you can just download it right away gorgeous pdf so welcome to the weekly blog i'll see you next week ciao for now let's get creative <laughs>